take you to write this book? Well, a book this size takes a long time. And this was about a three-year project. The first year, I wrote the first draft. The second year, I wrote the second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever, many drafts. And then the last year is production. I saw that you did a lot of research on the whole soda in industry and also the um, political advocacy efforts. So how would you see, is that the same thing uh, between tobacco industry and soda or more difference? Well, the tobacco industry is similar to the soda industry in some ways, but not others. Obviously, tobacco is a much more serious problem than sodas, but both industries are making products that are not good for people's health. And so they work in the same way to try to counter any public health measures that would encourage people to smoke less or to drink less soda. And in fact, the soda industry has followed the tobacco industry's playbook almost to the letter. First, you discredit the science. Then you discredit the scientists. Then you um, work behind the scenes to make sure that the government doesn't do anything and you fund community organizations so that they won't criticize you and you deflect attention from the damage that sodas do by talking about physical activity and hydration. So what's the major point that you're trying to make throughout your book? Well, in this book, the major point is that health advocacy actually works. If you advocate for a healthier food system, you get soda sales to fall. Soda sales have been falling for about 10 years now, and they've fallen by 20 to 25 percent. The soda industry believes that this is because of health advocacy. People worried about obesity and not drinking sugary drinks because they're worried about their weight. And I think that's what's happening. So this is a book about successful food advocacy, even though you have this giant corporation that makes billions of dollars a year and mar spends billions of dollars on marketing, health advocates have been able to get sales to go down with far fewer resources. And the other interesting fact I find out about your books that you also mentioned the inequality uh, among between the low income mm -hmm. neighborhood and the high income neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Do you find any interesting about that? Well, it's very clear who consumes sodas in the United States. It's a race, class, and age issue. So the biggest consumers of sodas are young men, that is men between, say, 18 and 30, um, and particularly if they're minority, African American or, or Hispanic. So the largest consumers of sodas are people who are not very well educated, who don't have much money, who live in low-income neighborhoods, and who are African-American or Hispanic. So it's very much related to class in the same way that cigarette smoking is. Young men, African-Americans and Hispanics are the big smokers. They're also the big soda drinkers. Why this difference um, do you think? Has come well, it's, uh, some of it is marketing. Uh, these are the target markets of much soda advertising. For example, the soda companies use sports figures, often minority sports figures, to advertise their products, and those attract people from minority groups.